D-Wave's computer runs the mirror of the entire planet. Sentient World Simulation is a matrix-like reality simulating humanity. You are connected as an organic computer. You can do that by programming the third strand of DNA to upload our minds, our consciousness, our memories, our self-awareness into a computer. The Model 512 in 2013, Gordy Rose described as having the equivalent processing power of 7 billion human brains. You are connected as an organic computer. Purdue University published a draft white paper in 2006 describing a sentient world simulation, a mirror, a virtual reality of the entire planet and all its inhabitants. 2007, it went live. If I had my graphics up, I'd show you the progression of the model numbers of the computers coincide with the implementation of the virtual world. D-Wave's computer runs the mirror of the entire planet. So the reason why I want you to pay close attention when you're looking at those big black boxes is that inside those boxes is a point, a chip, upon which is happening something that has never happened in the history of the Earth. It's an engineered thing which has become a nexus point for all of these parallel realities. The shadows of all of these different universes intersect at a physical point inside of one of those boxes. You can think of it as a portal. The DNA world and the digital world are becoming rapidly interchangeable. So all of life as we know it can be sent as digital code through the internet or as an electromagnetic wave. Let me just ask you before Craig goes on, um, how many of you are having trouble with this notion of digital code going over the internet and the notion of something living that's being converted back and forth like that? I mean, do you have some sense of what is going on? Can I show of hands how many people have trouble grokking this idea? You just interconvert the DNA language with the ones and zeros in the computer and you can send DNA as ones and zeros and recapitulate it at the other end. So we've successfully, and so with DARPA we built the uh, synthetic genomics, the receiving unit. Essentially it is a nano-thin coating of gold that allows for the imparting of digital information onto that third strand of DNA. We're now at this era where we can interconvert the biological and digital information. And so one implication of that is to be able to send biology as a digital magnetic wave. And we've been working with NASA on a sending unit. They're not terrifically powerful yet, but they're doing something completely different than what your computer does. And that thing is like flight. It gives these computers access to these new resources, maybe you could call them parallel universes, in order to do something that you couldn't otherwise do. And that is the electromagnetic linking between a genetically modified human comprised of third strand of DNA and the adiabatic quantum computer. What they're going to do is apply this machine to an area that I think is fundamentally important. It's the crux of our future as humans. And that's, can we build machines like us? The ultimate aim would be to archive enough data on each individual to be able to make a computer model of everyone on the planet. Right now, we're inside a computer program. Is it really so hard to believe? What we're building in the computer databases represents real life and is both the information uh, that's necessary and sufficient to drive all DNA-based life forms. Remember, going back to the sentient world simulation, peer-reviewed white paper out of Purdue University in 2006. The program went live in 2007, describing humans as a node. And every person on the planet is represented in the computer software as a node, that's a data node, and given an avatar. One of the most important things about this world is that robots can make copies easy, just like we can easily make copies of movies or music, we can make copies of a robot. Robots can travel by electronically. Instead of physically moving across the globe, you send their bits across a communication line, download them into something at the other end, and then they're there. The D-Wave acts as a nexus point between the biological and digital worlds. 
It creates a bidirectional link between a digital mind and a biological mind. This allows a biological mind to be programmed like a computer. It can augment the human and give an individual superhuman capabilities or as in the case of targeted individuals it can be used to destroy a person's life. The voices, images, and sensations a targeted individual perceives are the direct result of being linked to the digital mirror world. It's as if you're in two places at the same time. You are connected as an organic computer. I mean, this is this is one of the the most um, conspir quote unquote conspiratory theories that's been around for, for for many, 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 many years, decades. But the reality is, is we're now facing the reality of that. It is no longer a conspiracy. The science is done, and you will see this. And this is the next step on from the virtual reality goggles. And this is why it terrifies me, and this is why I'm trying to wake people up. NASA, Google, Amazon, the NSA's um, computing centers, data collection centers, like in Utah and Texas, all use D-Wave's computers. But they never talk about networking them. They present it to the public as though they operate independently with independent organizations. So how independent is Google? Jeff Bezos, Amazon. Why is he partnered with Google and D-Wave? I became aware of uh, what I describe as a social engineering program and uh, a research and development program that was being carried out by SIS uh, and our clients in Seattle, uh, the Amazon Corporation. And I later learned that they were indeed experimenting with, when I say experimenting, voice to skull, hive mind, behavior modification technology that is frequency based and directed at a targeted individual to basically control their entire person. The way it works is a device broadcasts a radio frequency, let's say at an individual, and that radio frequency will hook up with the resonant frequency of the individual's mind or body, or in this case, DNA. The third strand of DNA, our DNA, right now, can be modified through nanoparticles, nanomachines. We have inhaled through the aerosolized chemtrail spraying through our GMO foods. Our environment has polluted us. We have dormant nanocells, nanomachines in our body that will be triggered by microwave impulses. And what happens is once the resonant frequency is found in the targeted individual and the broadcast frequency matches up with that resonant frequency, those two frequencies interlock and they can be thought of as one frequency or one energy. The nanoparticles are triggered, your DNA begins to modify in the form of a third strand. We have two strands naturally, a third strand will be developed and it will change your body and it will change your mind. This comes right out of DARPA. I've read the papers. I understand the process. They have digitized DNA. Remember I said digital DNA coming through the portal. They digitize DNA into binary code. They transmit it through the cloud. And what happens is between the broadcast frequency and the individual that's receiving the broadcast frequency, once it's resonating, uh, once they are resonating together, a, a super highway of frequency along which information can be sent is created and so you can think of it just like fiber optic cables that you use to send uh, signals over the internet that connect people to the internet it's the exact same thing only a wireless application of that and so once you have connected the targeted individual with the frequency um, and they resonate together then you have a perfect uh, avenue upon which to send and receive information back and forth and that's exactly how they manipulate someone's thoughts. They send voices into someone's head. Uh, they manipulate their emotions. They manipulate their behavior. And then that's also how they receive back from the in individual in real time uh, the vital signs, the emotions, the thoughts, uh, what the person's seeing, what the person's hearing. And then all that information, of course, is rendered on a computer elsewhere uh, via software. And it can be monitored and tracked in real time in an environment that's called the Sentient World Simulation, SWS. D 
D-Wave's computer runs the mirror of the entire planet. The Model 512 in 2013, Gordy Rose described as having the equivalent processing power of 7 billion human brains, and each human brain processes a petaflop of data. This computer is what will run the world. I believe is already, to a certain extent, already running the world. And because it is artificially intelligent, will give rise to the beast and the mark of the beast system. And the single entity that will control everyone, every person on the planet.